Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hands On with me, Christian Chiller, where every week, usually on a Monday afternoon, I take a look at a piece of technology that I find interesting that I want to try, see how far I can get with it. If you like what you see, you can find more at christianchiller.com. And wherever you're watching right now, you can also find more as well, including my gaming streams, my podcast and various other things, all at christianchiller.com. And please, uh, if you enjoy what you see, uh, leave a comment, share with your friends. Uh, Always nice to hear from you and uh, from anybody else, of course. What am I going to look at today? I'm going to look at Naptive. The slogan is the silver lining in your cloud, which I really quite like as a, as a slogan, actually. They promise you can create environments, deploy and manage cloud native apps without worrying about Kubernetes. And you can find that at naptive.com. I interviewed them on my Chinchilla Squeaks podcast recently, and I was interested to find out more from, uh, from what they told me. So let's get stuck in. So I already did a little bit of this yesterday. There's probably going to be a few relics of what I tried yesterday left over, but I think for the most part, we can uh, we'll get the beginner experience. I'm going to also open up this uh, documentation here. Let's follow this uh, getting started guide. Naptiv uses this open application model, which uh, as we covered in the interview is a CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, application-centric specification that is cloud provider agnostic. There's other companies and projects also in this space. I find it quite interesting. A way of defining an application that you can move it around between sort of cloud hosting uh, providers, which I, which I find quite cool. So looking at it from an application perspective. Actually, one thing you'll see in this run-through that I also covered in the interview is it reminded me a lot of kind of super-powered uh, DigitalOcean droplets. If you remember when droplets came out, DigitalOcean and how sort of mind blowing they were, and they packaged these whole kind of dependencies together, almost preempting things like Docker and Kubernetes. But it's kind of what it makes me think of, actually, this sort of predefined uh, way of packaging up applications. So it's using Kubernetes and a whole bunch of other things here, but I think we'll just uh, jump into the getting started, really. So you sign up with GitHub, basically. These should get deleted within 24 hours. I think I did the uh, <laughs> this uh, just under 24 hours ago. So let's delete these and clear them out. So we're basically back to normal now. So we're logged in with GitHub. Uh, welcome to the playground. We can also sign up with LDAP. There is a CLI tool as well, but we'll come back to that later. Where we start is using their catalog of pre-built applications to deploy something. So they have Draw.io here. I actually didn't realize that Droyo was open source, which is kind of cool. We can pick the different versions here. I'm going to go for the latest, I think. Why not? We click deploy, and that will take a little bit of time, not too long. And well, there we go. It's already there. And then there's an endpoint here. So we can open that up. And there is Droyo. Pretty easy so far. I mean, nothing here is. Apart from the packaging, I feel like there's other services that do this, but um, let's carry on. Uh, this is interesting. This has actually retained this from in my browser cache from what I did yesterday, <laughs> even though it's a different instance, which is kind of weird. But anyway, <laughs> okay. And let's just uh, clean it up for now. Actually, I might leave it there. I wouldn't mind maybe playing with it later. Let's leave that there for now. What's next? Let's take a look at playground concepts, sure. So some of this we looked at already. We have the web interface, an impressive UI. Okay. CLI, we'll come back to that in a minute. OAM, we looked at that, Kubernetes. Uh, free services, the free tier gives you 24 hours, reasonable. Etc. Etc. I think this makes reasonable sense. Let's just go through these quickly, and then I think we want to look about how to deploy an existing application. That's kind of where we're really interested. So, web. I think we get the main idea here. This is just sort of a bunch of screenshots, really, at the moment. Uh, environment information. I don't know if we click on this, anything will refresh. Now this is uh, this is something we'll come to with the CLI as well. It's weird how the zoom levels don't always match with the fonts. I don't know if you can read that. I'll zoom in a bit there. So if we want to connect to these through uh, Kubernetes or through the custom 
CLI, we can. And I think this could be potentially useful as well. We'll see if there's any other uses for that later, but obviously there are going to be some. And we can also see environments up here. Uh, we haven't really done anything with environments yet. I don't know, nothing has in, nothing has kind of prompted us to create an environment. I get the impression that sort of um, test environments, production environments, that kind of thing. Don't see any obvious ways to create a new environment. It could be that that's all that you have available in a free tier, maybe. Schematics, explore the different lists. Ah, so here we go. We have components, which is a component that belongs to the open application model. So I guess this defines workloads of an application. We have traits. I would assume these all relate to the open application model then. Traits, I would assume would be some kind of aspect to the model scopes, I'm not really sure, and workloads. Maybe this will all become clear in a minute. I was hoping that this would uh, be more <laughs> beginner level, but I think it means we need a little, to know a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes first. Application makes sense. Let's go to the tutorials instead and maybe come back to these in a minute. So I think if we looked at deploying WordPress, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Use Oh no, it's a little different. So it's actually taking a different path here. Um, so actually this is helpful to understand some of the concepts though, I think, even if we don't go through it. So we have these tools, we can use the CLI, and then there's the different OAM components here. Why not? Let's, let's give this a go maybe. Okay. So I'll open up my terminal and I'll just check. I should still have it installed. Yeah. I logged in. Good. So most of this looks vaguely familiar. If you've done any kind of Kubernetes YAML, so far this all looks reasonably similar to a lot of other uh, concepts I've seen in, in Kubernetes resources. I won't go into too much detail on these, although I am quite interested in the, in the concept actually. Let's set that one there. So this is the WordPress component. We had the MySQL one and now we have the WordPress one. Paste that in, save it. Health scope, I don't really know what that means. I'm not sure what a health scope is. Um, something obviously more related to um, the OAM concept. Okay, health scope. Don't really know what it means. Keeps an eye on the health, I suppose. <laughs> and then we have application config. Which I guess binds everything together. It would make sense. And here's where we can see the traits and components. I guess, it, yeah, it just defines the application, ties everything together. Yeah, we can see all that here. So I guess in this case, we can do Naptiv. Yes, that worked. So we could now, yep, although we're seeing a warning, which is concerning. Um, and is anything happening in the GUI? Yes, it looks okay. I think it's probably that it needed to wait for the two different, no, still got a warning. We have the two different components here. Interesting they're separated. Kind of looks different from when we did it the other way, I guess. Also not seeing the actual application. Oh no, here it is. And here's the warning. Why do we have a warning? Not quite sure. I don't really see any messages. We could open it up. Nginx problem. So it looks like one component is good and one component is bad, but we don't really know what the problem is. Seem to be the ingress. Don't really see any errors there. So I'm not 100% sure how we find out how to solve this could see if the info helps. Maybe there will be 
some kind of logging functionality. It still says, just says warning. Anything in the FAQ? My application seems broken. So I could look at kubectl maybe, although I kind of want to do it the Naptib way and not the Kubernetes way. I don't know if there's some form of log command. We could look at apps help logs. There we go. MySQL error, that's warnings. Not seeing any errors, just warnings. It really seems to be an ingress error. So I don't know if we can instead look at that. How do we look at a component log? I would assume it's similar, although I don't see anything about, because we only have an issue with one of the components. And it seems to be ingress component. I'm not sure. I think I came to that conclusion just by seeing the Nginx error. So how do we look at that on its own? Help for that. Not really seeing how I can debug this. I wonder if there's a way just to restart it. <laughs> Classic kind of way to do things. That would be quite cool just to sort of reboot basically. Uh, I'm not really sure how I can do that. What's, that's just refresh the page, isn't it? Well, I am none the wiser and same error. Um, could be if we, I guess we'd want to look at the container logs then. So this is unfortunately then taking us into Kubernetes territory, which is not really where I wanted to go. What else? Application logs, maybe this will help. Um, yeah. Ah, checking component logs. There we go. All right, good. So, ah, okay, good. This is what we want. So we would do apps info and the app name. Now we can see the component and ah, so it's just a slash. Okay. That would have, could have probably figured that out. <laughs> so, um, okay. So it's my WordPress slash WordPress, I guess. No. Hmm. This is not really getting us anywhere. Let's try. Okay. That's what we had already, but I guess there's no logs enabled in there. I would find that hard to believe unless it just never got started. Uh, but this is still, I still feel like it's an Nginx error, not the WordPress error. And I don't, what I actually would like to do is, I also worry that because there's two <laughs> components with the same name, maybe that's the confusion. Can I look at trait errors? I don't know if that's possible. Uh, I also wonder if this works in a similar way to Kubernetes in that can I just reapply these files and it um, changes. So maybe in that case we could, uh, so this is one component name here. Seems to be the only component, WordPress component. Don't really know where the ingress is coming from. Kind of unclear how the ingress even gets created. Oh, here it is here, ingress traits. I kind of want to be able to look at the logs for a trait. I don't know if that's a possibility. Um, doesn't seem so. All right, that's not really working. I would like to try it doing the creating one from our own application instead then. So let's jump back to that. I also wonder if we're going to have the same problem just out of pure interest 
if I go back to the catalog and install WordPress from here instead, is it the same problem? No, that seems to work. Okay. Um, so this would be, no. Okay. <laughs> same again. So there's some sort of issue, although there's no error this time, there's some sort of issue with the ingress. Although I did see, I could just try this out of interest. Let's see. I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of apps list command. Let's see. Uh, no, maybe just nothing. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, that's got an okay now. That's, that's odd. All right. So we'll go open. That's actually, that's, oh, no, it's, just, it's got the same name. <laughs> this is why one I just deleted. That's why. Huh. Well, that's strange. So I think the issue is that this URL is not the same as this URL. No, it is. All right, it just needed some time, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if we can do the same thing now with that folder. Let's try it. Okay, so it didn't really clear in itself up completely by the looks of it. It's odd because this, this is displayed very differently, actually. Uh, maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Uh, we're still not getting it up here though. This refreshes fairly slowly. It's the same issue by the looks of it. So there's obviously some difference between those two versions they have there. I don't know if this will, yeah. Okay, well, there's a problem with those YAML files. All right, fine. So that's all well and good. Um, what I would really like to try is see how we can deploy our own application. I have a, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get us very far. So there's a limited amount we can do right now, I suppose. Um, let's have a look through this uh, schematics. Now maybe we understand it a little bit more. So adding schematics. I don't really know what a schematic is. Just I think schematics just means the different parts of an application, I think. Um, so adding schematics. Let's assume you want to add a new component to the system using the drawer component from the tutorial. Save the following file. So this is the same thing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You could deploy it with. So add a component. So what's the difference between a component and an application? I guess I could create components and then create an application, I suppose, is the sort of insinuation there. Um, let's, let's see what happens. Um, I guess it won't have like a front end and things like that, maybe. I'm not sure really. Let's, uh, let's change into that folder and copy and paste that in. Okay. Save it. Okay. Added. But I guess that's all that's going to be there. Yeah, we don't get an application. So, so what? What can I do with it? Um, I have a component, traits and scopes. I still don't really know <laughs> what those are, but good to know that we can list them. Workloads as well, same thing. So I have a component, but what do I do with it? And equivalent with, um, with uh, kubectl. Yeah, this is what we already looked at. So we have the components. Yeah, I think it's just individual components. So we might create them and then have different applications. We might have one drawio component and then different applications that use that same component in different ways, um, whatever that may be. That would be especially useful probably for the MySQL one to have different uh, databases, the same component with different databases. And then a MySQL application, sorry, a WordPress application, a Drupal application, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. So this lets us do a similar thing using kubectl instead. Actually, I wonder if we can get it from here. I downloaded a file, that might work better. Uh, so if we do this now, we're gonna get this duplicate um, component. So let's try deleting it with just this way. 
So I would assume something like if this was following a similar pattern to kubectl, could do delete. No. Okay. Okay. So I guess we would do delete draw IO. Yes. Good. So now we can try this. And do it there. So this is so in a similar way. It's interesting though because all the examples have it without the dot yaml, which is kind of what's needed. Should work, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Um, and I am not sure if that's, yeah, there we go. And then if we wanted to expose endpoints, so this is using with kubectl, but there doesn't seem to be a way to do it in a playground native way by the looks of it. So this probably helps us understand some of what we looked at. A component is a single service, yeah. A trait is a mechanism that extends functionality of a component. That's a bit broad, but yeah. And then an application ties it all together. Yeah, so this is kind of what we discussed. Application is my WordPress. We have the MySQL component with parameters and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, cool. And we can find more details there. I think we can summarize now. So it's, it's a little new, a little raw. Uh, let's go back to the slogan. Without worrying about Kubernetes. That's not strictly true quite yet. If you use those prepackaged applications, and I'm assuming you could probably also find those uh, elsewhere if it's using this standardized model, then um, great. But it feels like there still needs to be a bit of fiddling around with Kubernetes to really take full advantage of the platform. At the moment, it's basically kind of a, a wrapper, a front-end and CLI wrapper around a pre-existing uh, custom resource in Kubernetes, um, which is fine. Uh, and there's a few rough edges there, which you can definitely see. I don't really know what environments are yet. That didn't really get covered unless I missed something somewhere. So it's a bit rough around the edges. I like the concepts. I love this kind of application model. I've seen quite a lot of uh, tools attempt to do this, this kind of platform as a service type of thing with, uh, with Kubernetes. There's a, quite a few companies trying different things in this way. Um, and I really like this kind of idea of having a bundle of an application like the, the droplet, like the Bitnami kind of style. You know, these are all concepts that have been around for a little while and giving you a series of YAML files that you can, you know, version control and do all these things and move them around. Naptive as a platform itself needs a little bit more work, I think. There's a few errors here and there. It's a small team, early days. So probably have an experiment, have a play. You can experiment for free at naptive.com and maybe uh, get in touch with the team or give it a few months yet before you put any production workloads in there or know what you're doing. But um, I'll keep an eye on it. And uh, as those uh, that catalog of applications expands, there might be some more usefulness there as well. But it's probably quite useful for just throwing up a, a quick application for something. If you want a TensorFlow or something like that to just run some quick processes, something like that. I'm not really going to put WordPress there. I don't really want a WordPress blog for 24 hours or maybe, but I don't. So yeah, um, early days, take a look, maybe check back in a few months and see how it's matured. So if you enjoyed that, you can find more about me at christianchiller.com where you can also uh, find all my videos that I work on, my podcast, my writing. Wherever you're watching this, you can subscribe, leave a comment, etc., etc. Always welcome. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Take care.